Good day, and thank you for tuning in to a, an, another uh, thrilling day uh, in the day of our Lord. You know, uh, life can be treacherous at times. Uh, however, we have a God that gives us unlimited potential. You know, the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, he has given to us so that there is no mountain too high, no valley too wide, no obstacle that we cannot overcome. And what we learn uh, from uh, uh, the gospel is that for each of us, there's a simple formula uh, to unleashing the unlimited potential that we have. If we can get our mind focused in the right direction, limit the amount of negativity that we allow to enter into our consciousness, if we will act based on what we know God can do, and if we will proceed in that fashion and recognize that our strength, our help, and our hope does not lie in our friendship or our family, but it lies in our relationship with Jesus and the power he has given us through his Holy Spirit. If we do that, we then become uncomfortable, and anything that we take to do, the Bible says, it will not be impossible. So again, thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoy today's message. And please stop by and see us uh, at 5641 Herbert Moore Road in the wonderful city of Virginia Beach, uh, 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Our ability to perform and to do is unlimited. That I can accomplish anything when God is with me. Yes. And, 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 and so if, 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 if he wrote this to the Philippians, he was also writing it in a general epistle to let each of us know who are members of the church that through Christ all things are possible. And that we too have unlimited potential. We just have to learn how to unlock it so we can get all that God has positioned for us to have. Uh, what I want to do today is to kind of just uh, treat today's lesson kind of like a Bible study session okay. and go through it verse by verse mm -hmm. so we can kind of get the fullness of where Paul was coming from. Mm -hmm. Because, see, it doesn't matter how excited I, we get based on our singing or based on our shouting or based on, uh, you know, our emotional fervor. If we don't get it in our hearts and in our hands, then we get it become meaningless. Because you can only apply that which you have a full understanding of and that which you now know how to utilize when you go out in your daily walk and in your daily talk. So now he, he gives us four basic things that we need to hold on to and make sure it becomes a part of how we live our lives in a daily walk. Now note what he says here as he's addressing the congregation in Philippi. He says, finally, here are some things I need you to do. And the first thing he says in verse 8 is, finally, brethren, I need you to get your mind right. That's what he says. It is as if he's letting them know that your thinking has been out of whack. So he says to them, what I need you to do is transfer how you now think to where you need to think. And he says to them that your thinking has been negative. And because your thinking has been negative, you have been negative. Because so as a man thinketh, so is he. He says to them, you have not been able to accomplish because you didn't believe in your mind that you could accomplish. So he says, finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things have good virtue, whatsoever things bring you praise, this is what I want you to think of. So he says, in a sense, when you get up in the morning, my thinking ought to be different. When I wake up, my thought process ought not to be on what got me where I am, uh -huh. but what can get me where I'm going. Amen. Right? He said, my thinking has to be positive. I need to change the way I think. And so I'm no longer thinking on the glass is half empty. I'm now thinking that the glass is half full. Because even though both 
say the same amount of water is in the glass. One says I'm negative and one says I'm positive. And so what Paul says here is one of the things that keep us trapped is that we keep on worrying about where we used to be. As if we can change by our thought processes where we have messed up. And he says rather than thinking on that kind of stuff, think on something that's going to make you want to praise him. Think on stuff that's going to make you want to lift him up. So he says, when I wake up, I need to start thinking about the good things that God has done for me. Because no matter where I am, there are some good things that God is working out in my life. In fact, if I don't have a lot, but I'm still here, that's something good that God is working out in my life. And that gives me a reason to say, I got the glass half full, rather than the glass half empty. Let's say somebody just walked out of my life and thought when they walked out, I was going to fall out and die. But I woke up this morning, and what I realized is what I had before they left is what I still have right now. The only thing that I don't have is them. So you have to think for the problem anyway. So I got to change the way I think about my situation. So when you leave me, I don't think bad, I think good. And then yeah. God moved you yeah. so I could move forward. Yeah. Because when yeah. you were the one that was holding me down yeah. in the first place. Yeah. Because when you were here, I didn't have any peace. Come on, At least with you go and I don't have peace. It ain't because of you, it's because of me. That's right. Talking all right. That's right. So Paul says my first step is to get my mind right. Yeah. Can we agree that when we leave you today, that what we're going to work on is getting our mind right? Can we agree that when we walk out here today, when we wake up in the morning, that we're going to say to ourselves, it's going to be a good day? Can we agree that we're going to look in the mirror and not say anything negative about us, but that it's going to be a good day? Can we agree that when we wake up tomorrow and look at ourselves, that we're going to classify ourselves as beautiful and say, look at what God has made. When God made me, he brought the mold. He made something good in me. Yes, sir. Can we agree that we're going to walk out and go on the job tomorrow and say, you know what, I'm blessed to be here. I don't care what I'm doing, I'm blessed to be here. Because God is blessing me every day. And new wonders I see every time I open my eyes. Matter of fact, can we not wait till tomorrow? Can you just tell yourself right now that I know I am blessed? I know I am good. I know God made something great. But God made me. But He made me in His own image. That's right. That's right. So Paul says that the first thing I have to do is what? Get my mind right. Then in verse 9 he says, Now also he said, Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, now you need to start to do it. So he said that, listen, I know you have heard about how to get your life in order. I know you have watched how I got my life in order. He says, now it's time for you to do what you saw and heard. In other words, your actions now need to mirror your professed faith. Let me drop that on you one more time. He says, your actions need to mirror your professed faith, not your faith. Your professed faith. See, here's what Paul is saying. He said, act as if you have faith, and faith will be given unto you. He said, because even though you don't believe you can do it, you have told folk that you can do it. Even though you didn't think you could make it, you said to somebody, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So since you told somebody, start acting on what you told somebody. When you put them out of your house, here's what you told them. I don't need you. I can do bad all by myself. So now act like you can do better without this. Don't call them back up and say, I need you to come back. Don't wallow in the dirt. Get up from that. Wake up. Go in and take a shower. Put on your best clothes. Get your hair just like it needs to be. And step out in the world like you are somebody. If you ain't got no money in your pocket, walk like you were for me.
like you got yeah. money in your bank. Yeah. We know you broke, but don't walk around like you broke. Walk around like you got plenty of money in your bank. Walk in the store like you can buy anything, even though you can't buy but one thing. Walk around like you can buy name brand, but you just picking up the generic just because you want to pick up the generic. Yeah. Yesterday, and I 
can't guarantee my future, but I can enjoy myself today. this, 
but now it's time to act on Amen. this. See, oftentimes we say that my strength comes from Jesus, right. but we act like our strength is supposed to come from our relationship with family and our relationship with friends. Yeah. And that's why we get mad when friends don't do to us like we think yeah. they ought to do to us. Yeah. That's why we get mad when family don't treat us the way family, we think family should treat us because we are leaning and depending on family and on friends and not on Jesus. See, there's some folks that will get mad if they go to family and say, family, I need you to loan me some money because my rent ain't getting paid. And they'll get mad if family don't lend them the money. I've had folks get mad at me because they say, pastor, my rent need to get paid. Can the church pay my rent? And if I say the church don't pay all of your bills, but then do you look something to help you along your way? Well, I'm gonna leave that church right now because I can't depend on y'all. See, the problem is they're depending on us. Yeah. Child, where you want that child. Amen. Amen. 
But you can't do it with your own energy. That's right. Yeah. But if you get Jesus. Amen. Done. You yes. 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 yes, Lord. See, you said the child had the devil in Mine. In your mind, they already lost. Yes. So you are acting on what you just said. That the child had the devil in it. So your gratitude ain't there. Because you're mad right now. And since you're mad right now, you don't even believe God's going to do it. But if you change the way you think about the child, the child ain't got the devil. The child just needs some more Jesus. The child ain't got no more devil than we got. Matter of fact, if it's a little child, he can't have a son of devil. He can literally have a lot of devil. <laughs> Your marriage all messed up. Same thing. I can do all things through Christ. Yes. No, you can't forgive them on your own. You know why? Because within you is not what you need to forgive them. But within, but Christ, through Christ, that relationship will get it back in you. Your servitude on your job, in your neighborhood. Yes. You can't do it by yourself, but you can do all things through Christ. Yes. Yes. But you gotta get your head right. Yes. You gotta understand who you are in Christ. Thank you. you know he died for your sins that you yes. know Thank you. Yes. Thank you. you really know that. Yes. I'm talking to saved folk now. Yes. Did you know he died for your sins? Yes. Are you sure you know he died for yes. Do you know why I'm asking the question this, this way? If he died for you, don't you think about it. If he died for you, what won't he do for you? Amen. 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 Yeah. See, if I, really, if I really know he died for me, yes. then what won't he do for me? Yes. If he gave his life for me, Jesus then what won't he do for me? Yes. See, he can get me through college. Yes. Yes. Because he died for me. Yes. He won't take the test for me, but I can do all things. Yes. He'll, he'll bring it back to my remembrance. Amen. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, he'll he do that stuff for me. Right? He'll be, he'll be my friend. Yes. And, and that's what this is talking about. It's just a change in understanding, a change in attitude, a change in how we view our Savior. Yes. So we stop depending on ourselves. Amen. So we stop depending on other people. Yes. Because when you depend on people, you're in for a letdown. That's yes. right. That's why we have to depend on Jesus and not get mad when folk don't act where we want folk to act. Because it's not in Him, it's in Jesus. Yeah. You see? Yeah. That's what He's saying. Because when you depend on Jesus, you stop depending on other folks. That's right. That's right. I don't need you to do for me. I got Jesus. Yeah. I can do it for myself. Yeah. I got just as much power as you got. Yeah. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. But his, the initial thing he says is, I can do through Christ. Yes. So you, we, have, we have to have Christ in our life. Yes. Now, here's what I know. I know that everybody that comes to church doesn't have Christ. They have church, but they don't have Christ. I know that there are people that come to church because it is the appropriate thing to do on a Sunday morning. Because that's what we do. And I know that there are people that are afraid to accept Christ because they don't understand the love Christ has for them. I want you to know that your fears are unwarranted. That Christ loves you more than you could ever imagine. He's not a condemning God. In fact, the Bible says, I came not to condemn, but to save. People will try to condemn you, but that's not what Jesus said he came for. He came to uplift you. I say that because I don't want you to walk out of here today not receiving Christ because you're worried about how other folk will view you or have viewed you in your past. Yeah. I want you to receive Christ because you're looking to do all things and unleash your unlimited potential. Yeah. So I want to invite you right now if you're here today. As the choir gets ready to sing, I want to invite you right now. 
If you have not received Christ as your personal Savior, I want you to come up right now so I can show you how simple, how easy it is to become a child of the living God. Through Christ, I can do all things. The church doors are open and the invitation is out there. If you have not received Christ as your personal